Hey there guys, welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogajan, aka The Seattle Data Guy. Today we're going to talk about promotions, or more like levels, and kind of the difference between engineers at different levels. Because recently, I've been running a survey to understand the current state of the data infra world. Uh, this survey's got questions that involve, you know, asking what data orchestration tool are you using, what data storage uh, system are you using, are you using Snowflake, are you using Databricks, what's, you know, what's where? And one of the questions that I ask is, do you feel like you know what it takes to get a promotion? Almost 60% of you at this point have said no, which is really kind of sad and painful, but also a reality that I know everyone deals with. I'll give an example. Back in my meta days, I was talking to another engineer who throughout the whole quarter was telling me, hey, I think I'm, you know, I'm bound to get a promotion. My manager's telling me I'm going to get a promotion. I'm going to get a promotion. I'm going to get a promotion. And then time comes. And not only did he not get a promotion, but it wasn't even like a decently high level in terms of like rating for anyone who uh, doesn't know about meta or Facebook's ratings. You can kind of check them out here. So that's a lot of dissonance and that causes a lot of problems, right? Like people decidedly probably want to quit or change jobs if they're constantly having the situation show up and if it's not clear. So let's try to like frame this in such a way so you can kind of understand what most companies expect. And in order to understand that, I think it's important that we look at this from uh, at least four different levels. So, you know, junior, mid-level, senior, and staff engineer, because everyone wants that 500K staff engineer job. If they still exist, thank you all of these layoffs. So what does it take to go from, again, junior to mid and so on and so forth? We're gonna look at this from a few different angles in each section. So we're gonna look at the kind of work that you're gonna be doing, um, the kind of responsibility you should be taking and just understanding the bigger picture. Like how much of the bigger picture should you really be understanding at what point? So let's start with juniors. And this is probably the most obvious, which at junior level, what you're really kind of doing is just tasks. You're just doing small little tasks. They're often attached to a larger project that maybe a mid or a senior engineer is running. And they're telling you, you know, to build a one-off pipeline or to write some test code or whatever it might be. But it's all these very clear, distinct, non-ambiguous asks. Nothing is ambiguous and there's no you having to go to someone else and figure out maybe some of the, some clarity. It's very, very clear on what needs to be done. That's the type of tasks you're doing. Another thing that I've often noticed, and this is something that I did, um, is junior engineers either ask too many questions or too few questions. And it's really hard for anyone to be perfect at that because you're either, you know, you don't want to ask for help because you feel like that makes you look uh, either not necessarily weak, but unintelligent at a pace that gets projects moving along or you ask so many questions that eventually you kind of honestly annoy your senior engineers. And in terms of responsibility at this level, although you should take self-responsibility for the work that you do, just in terms of organization, when things go wrong, most of the time it's probably not on you. Most of the time it's probably, you know, a senior engineer or your manager who told you um, some information that either was wrong or, you know, gave you the wrong instructions and that ends up falling on them because that's part of being a more senior engineer. You take responsibility for a lot of things that go wrong, but that's also the benefit and why you get paid more. And in terms of bigger picture, you're probably not thinking too much about it at all. At this level, your focus is getting really good technically, you know, just honing your technical skills, putting in those 10,000 hours to just do all that boring work that will in the future pay off because you'll know how to do all this basic stuff. And that's really your focus as a junior engineer. All right, now let's take it up a level and go up to mid-level engineer. So at this point, again, you've been doing basic tasks for a long time. And now a manager or a you know, principal engineer should come to you and be able to give you kind of an, an ambiguous project. You know, Now we've kind of gone from little tasks that maybe go up to a project to you're the one who's going to start defining what this project is. So they're gonna give you this kind of ambiguous project ask. Um, there's gonna be some things you're gonna have to suss out. You're going to have to talk with your cross-functional partners. Uh, at Facebook, we call them XFNs. And you will have to communicate with them and you know make sure that you're understanding what they want, giving them updates, things of that nature. And you're gonna be figuring out which parts of the project are you doing? Are there you know maybe some other engineers that maybe could help you? But more than likely at this point, the size of project that you're doing is all on you and you probably aren't leaning too heavily on other people. It's more just about you hitting your timelines and, and making sure things get delivered. Also at this point, you have a pretty good idea of when you should start asking for help because that's what keeps projects moving along. You realize, or you're starting to realize when you know, you're know you blocked and you either need to talk to a manager or you need to talk to someone on another team to kind of move things forward. Whether that's because you don't have the information or because someone else just needs to do something. And in terms of big picture, you're starting to understand some of the risks and, and blockers that can happen, You know, not just 
on your team, but in other places uh, that you kind of need to start mitigating, that you need to start being like, hey, we need to have a conversation here um, with this XFN because if, you know, we're kind of slowing down on this part of the project and I need to keep it moving forward. So you start to kind of get that inkling, like, okay, I need to think bigger. It's not just about my work, you know, delivering a piece of anything or a project isn't just about your work, but it's about all of the functional pieces getting delivered. And to some degree at this point, you might start to mentor, um, maybe you're more junior engineers, depending on the time that you have and depending on the projects that you're running, it might be a great chance for you to manage an intern or something similar to that, just to get a, a flavor for what it's like. All right, so now we're at kind of the senior step. So seniors, right? You've been probably doing this for five, 10 years, depending on the company. Everyone kind of has a different leveling system. I mean, I've seen people become seniors right after getting a master's degree, but personally, I think you need some years of experience because what you really start learning besides all these technical things is how to work in situations where you need other people's help. Like senior engineers need to be able to finish projects and also find projects by themselves as well as figure out when things are stuck and how they should move them forward. So starting with that first part, before you were probably assigned projects, like project level things as a mid-level engineer, but you then define what, how it had to get completed. Now at senior, you should really start coming to your manager and being like, hey, I think we need to improve this thing on our team. You know, it's usually team level, maybe there's some higher level things, but usually at this state, it's like team level. And you're starting to have that, you know, autonomy where you're like, hey, I know exactly what needs to happen. You know, I know what projects need we need to do. I kind of have some idea. I'll help my manager even organize which projects we should do first. So that's kind of where you start. And you're also starting to see other people as possible helpers, not just as again, like where you're just interacting with them kind of um, from the side and just asking for get unblocked here and there, you're actually being like, hey, I can start assigning people work. I can start being like, hey, let's do this project. I think it'd be great if you help me here um, to maybe a junior or mid-level engineer. And you can kind of start getting comfortable in maybe not managing people, but managing the project itself. And, and seeing that there are more pieces that go beyond just you. So it's not just you, not just your team, but now you're starting to reach into other teams and you're starting to make sure that they're all kind of cooperating correctly and moving in one direction. And you're starting to take ownership for that project, really. Like it's a lot of responsibility and you're like saying, hey, you know what, I'm gonna own this project. And if it's delivered or not, it's on me. Technically, yes, your skills at this point are getting better because basically in order to get to senior, yes, you have to improve all these soft skills, but you can get away with some maybe lesser soft skills, not completely. You always need to communicate. You need to up, keep project up, up to date. But at this point, it's not the differentiator, right? Like as long as you're technical to a certain level, as long as you're able to deliver projects, even if it's maybe in a way that maybe rubs people the wrong way at some companies, you might still get a senior position. But there's definitely a blocker now for most people to get to staff. And this is kind of this, how do I get to staff? And then there's also principal, but we'll just stick with staff. You know, how do I get there? What is there? And, and this is at least at most companies where they start defining archetypes. So people who aren't just coders, but people who maybe are more solutions people who see a problem and then they define solutions around that and they help people kind of build that solution. They have kind of people that they consider like this 10X coder, which obviously there's a lot of controversy around that term, but like just people who like are coding monsters who like code like no one else and can put out code. And, and that's like some level of staff engineer because that kind of inspires people. That's not what you're limited to. Uh, when to get to the staff level of engineers. And if you've read anything from Will Larson, you've probably come across his archetypes of different staff level engineers. And I think this does a decent job uh, at kind of covering different types of staff level engineers. Different people might have different archetypes. I think Facebook had some different archetypes as well, but you start to see that there's a difference. And let's just kind of dig into this. You know, I'm gonna put up the, the different types that he's got. First, let's look at the team lead. So this kind of approach usually is focused on guiding a particular team, partnered with a manager. And really, again, it's focused more on kind of setting the tone for the team. There's the architect, and I kind of referenced this earlier, is someone who kind of sees solutions, someone who kind of sees the bigger picture, um, starts defining kind of the quality, the approach to solving different problems that are very critical to the business uh, and helps kind of like lead these projects forward. Um, there's the solver. So for example, if you've got really complex problems out there, you know, I know we all think we solve complex problems, but there's, there's some really complex problems out there in terms of maybe you need to manage billions of users coming in all at once and for whatever reason you've got cost limitations and you need to figure out how to manage this really complex problem whatever it might be and that's when you call in the solver because they're going to solve a problem that is far beyond just code it really is just this system level complex problem and then finally they define the right hand which is a partner kind of an extension of like the executive team and they're basically playing a role that essentially extends the hand um, of the executive team so whatever kind of uh, business alignments that need to happen they might be the ones that help set the tone like hey maybe this is our new uh, initiative 
we need someone to drive this from a technical standpoint. And one of the things about driving any technical initiative is you need technical people to be bought in. And so that's usually a staff engineer. So the executive team will go to that staff engineer and be like, hey, this is the initiative. We need you to drive it. And so they can kind of understand as an engineer, what needs to happen both technically as well as from a kind of change management perspective, like, oh, we need to you know make these things happen. We need to have these conversations. Um, I need to get buy-in from X, Y, and Z um, to make sure that we actually drive this project forward. And these are really important roles because again, not every problem at a business is technical. In fact, most things are people problems. So once you get to these levels, you're using your technical expertise to help solve these people problems that you will unavoidably run into. And at this point, you're taking responsibility for not just like your team or a team project, you're taking responsibility for, again, entire programs, entire initiatives where you are kind of on the line and you're having to mitigate risk at a level that is far beyond just, again, how your code interacts somewhere, but how this system's going to interact, how these different teams that are delivering multiple components and modules are gonna make sure that everything comes together nicely and is tested well and nothing breaks the build. And it's a really important role. And I, I think it's one of those things that you can start to feel like, oh, but they're less technical when they're, Usually not, it's just they understand this world from a very different perspective. And that's the whole goal of a staff level engineer. You're driving value in multiple different ways, whether some of it might be technical or the others might be just people and making sure that all of your other teams are aligned. It's a super crucial role. And these are usually the roles you see that are giving you the 500K. So whenever you see like someone's making 500K at whatever, Facebook, Google, wherever, it's usually staff level engineers. So just in case people are out there wondering why am I not making that much? Um, these people generally have 10 years plus of experience, unless you're Zach Wilson. But other than that, most people have that much in order to get there. So I wouldn't get too uh, frustrated if you're not there yet. We all kind of go through these levels at our own pace. And I also think there's some wisdom in maybe not always going to staff engineer. For some people, you'll realize if you have a family, if you have all this other stuff, it can be a lot to manage. You're probably taking the responsibility of like 30 to 40 people on your shoulders of making sure that they all deliver. And doing that, plus maybe having a family or just whatever it might be, maybe you just have a life that you like living. Maybe you like going snowboarding uh, three days out of the week. I don't, I don't know. Maybe you just don't have time. It's important to understand that there's a reason a lot of people kind of cap at senior and they just personally choose that choice. It's like, why would I want to go to staff if I kind of like to chill and have less responsibility? That's up to you. You need to decide what you like doing. If you want to just be in the office all the time, or if you'd like to have some sanity in your life. With that guys, I just want to say thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you all next time. Thanks and goodbye.